I didn't touch the Sabbath day. So I think I'm gonna touch it tonight because um, sometimes we can take it for granted because we use it all the time, but it's much deeper than you may think, all right? So we're gonna touch on that. So let's open up with the book of Exodus chapter 20, verse eight. Let's start there. Exodus 20, verse eight. The book of Exodus, chapter 20, verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Read that again. Read the verse again. The book of Exodus, chapter 20, verse 8. Mm -hmm. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. It says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. The Sabbath day is, 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 a, is one of the most important days. Okay? The first high holy day that the Lord ordained for all Israel. All right? Read it again. Verse 8. Exodus chapter 20 verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Now watch this. Give me that in Deuteronomy 32 verse 7. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Deuteronomy 32 verse 7. Read that. Deuteronomy 32 verse 7. Remember the days of old. Consider the years of many generations. Ask thy father and he will show thee, thy elders, and they will tell thee. You see what the commandment is? It says, remember the days of old. The Sabbath day is the day of old. The Sabbath day is the day, is one of the days of old. Understand that? That's why Moses is saying, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Because the Sabbath day is, a, is one of the days of old. Read that again, verse 7. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 7. Remember the days of old. Consider the years of many generations. Ask thy father, and he will show thee. Thy elders, and they will tell thee. He says, consider the years of many generations. The generations from the time of... Give me that in Genesis 5 and 1. Consider the years of many generations. Genesis chapter 5 and verse 1. Read that. Genesis chapter 5 verse 1. Mm -hmm. This is the book of the generations of Adam. The what? The generations of Adam. The book of the generations of Adam. The generations of Adam. Come on. In the day that God created man, in the no. likeness of God made he him. In the likeness of God made he him. It says, in the day that God created man, in the likeness of God made he him. So this is going into the generations of Adam. It's going into what? Alpha Adam. The first man that was created. You understand on earth. So go back to Deuteronomy 32, verse 7 again. Deuteronomy chapter, chapter 32, verse 7. Remember the days of old. Consider the years of many generations. Mm -hmm. Ask thy father, and he will show thee. Thy elders, and they will tell thee. You see that thing right there? That's what's going on today. It says, Ask thy father. As thy father, and he will show thee how where is he gonna what he's gonna use to show you the days of old, the years of many generations, the Bible. You understand? As thy father, and he will show thee, thy elders they will tell thee out of what? God's law, God's commandments. Go back to where he was that now. Exodus 20, verse 8. Read that. Exodus chapter 20, verse 8. Mm -hmm. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. So the Sabbath day is one of the days of old. The Sabbath day is one of the days of old. I'm going to prove what I'm saying. Give me that in Genesis 2 verse 1. Genesis. Genesis chapter 2, start of verse 1. Genesis chapter 2 verse 1. Mm -hmm. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. Come on. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had made. You see that thing? On the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had made. Watch this. Come on. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because that in it he had rested from all his work, which God created and made. You see that thing? Because in it, 
because that in it he had rested from all his work which God created and made. So we're going all the way back to Genesis. You understand? All the way back to the beginning. So when it says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy? Yes, the Sabbath day is one of the days of old. And that's what we're reading the history here. You understand? From the beginning. Going all the way back to Genesis. All right? Give me the, go back to Exodus 20 verse 8 again. Exodus chapter 20 verse 8. Mm -hmm. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. How do, you, how do we keep it holy? Remember, it says the Lord sanctified the Sabbath day. You know, he rested and he sanctified the Sabbath day. John 17, verse 17. Watch this. John chapter 17, verse 17. John chapter 17, verse 17. Mm -hmm. Sanctify them through thy, through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Thy word is truth. It says, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. So how the, the most High God sanctified the Sabbath day is because there were guidelines, there were, there were laws that were attributed to the Sabbath day that made the Sabbath day more excellent than other days. Because other days are just ordinary days. The Sabbath day is not an ordinary day. It's an excellent day. It excels other days because that in it, the Lord rested, and he sanctified it and he hallowed it. You understand? Go back to where he was at now. Exodus 20 verse 8. Exodus chapter 20 verse 8. Mm -hmm. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. He says, remember this, uh, remember this day. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. The seventh day. Keep it holy. You understand? Why? Because the most High God, he rested on this day. He sanctified this day any hallowed. So likewise, we also must do the same on this glorious day of the Lord. Okay? He says we must keep it holy. Keep it holy, what does that mean? Give me that in Romans 7 verse 12. He says we must remember this glorious day and keep it holy. Okay? Romans chapter 7 verse 12. See there. Romans chapter 7 verse 12. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, the law is holy. And the commandment holy and just and good. So the laws of God is holy. The commandments of God is holy. And they are just and they are good. So God's commandment is holy. So the Sabbath day also is, it is holy. What makes it holy? is because the law that was set up to, to establish that day. The Lord did that day on the seventh day of creation. Okay? Watch this. Give me... The book, hmm, let me see if I want to go there now. Okay, go back to Exodus 20. Exodus 20 verse 9, read that. Exodus chapter 20 verse 9. Mm -hmm. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. Come on. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. Mm -hmm. In it thou shalt not do any work. Thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. So now, you see verse 9 to verse 10? For in six says, days. Hold on, wait, wait. Verse 9 says, six days shall thou labor and do all thy work. Meaning what? The same way that the Most High God, he labored for six days, okay, and on the seventh day he rested, likewise, we must do the same thing. Because when you, when you read the, the the evening and the morning was the first day. The evening and the morning was the second day. On all those days, what was going on? Laboring was, was going on. You understand? The most I go the most I was separating the he used he used Christ to do that. Okay, but we're just keeping it simple. All right. To create the fishes, the rivers, you understand? The, the fowls of the earth and so forth, the creeping things and so forth. Okay, the vegetation, the vegetables and the fruit the seed, all of that, because that was labor. So the Lord did that thing for six days. He did that. Okay. On the seventh day, he rested. So likewise, what Moses is teaching us here, he's teaching us to follow after the footsteps of those that came before us, because Adam kept the Sabbath. Our forefathers kept the Sabbath from the time of Adam. The Sabbath was kept. 
Okay. Read verse 9 again. Exodus chapter 20 verse 9. Read. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. Mm -hmm. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. Thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. So now, what you see in verse 10, it says, the, the, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it, thou shalt not do any work. Any, you must not do the work. Anyone and everything that's connected to you must not be laboring on that day. You understand? Watch this. Let's get to some, some example of when we was in the wilderness, one of our forefathers, they decided to, you know what? I'm going to go against this. I'm going to do what I think is correct in my own business life. Give me that in Numbers 15, 32 real quick. Numbers 15, verse 32. Because after this, that's when the law of the fringes was instituted. Okay? Numbers 15, verse 32. Numbers chapter 15, verse 32. And while the children of Israel were in the wilderness, they found a man that gathered sticks upon the Sabbath day. So he was laboring. He was gathering sticks on upon the Sabbath day to do what? Cooking. Okay. The reason why he was gathering these things so that he can cook. And what does the law say? Give me that in Exodus 35 real quick. We will touch it later on, but I'm just going to touch it now just to bring the point out. Exodus 35, start at verse 2. Exodus chapter 35, verse 2. Mm -hmm. Six days shall work be done, but the seventh day there shall be to you an holy day, a Sabbath of rest to the Lord. Come on. Whosoever doeth work therein shall be put to death. Shall be what? Whosoever doeth work therein shall be put to death. So whosoever doeth work therein shall be put to death. We're going to read about that example right now. Next verse. Verse 3. Ye shall kindle no fire throughout your habitations upon the Sabbath day. He says, don't kindle no fire throughout your habitations upon the Sabbath day. Now read verse 2 again. Exodus 35 verse 2. Exodus chapter 35 verse 2. Read. Six days shall work be done, mm -hmm. but the seventh day there shall be to you an holy day, a Sabbath of rest to the Lord. Whosoever doeth work therein shall be put to death. So we're going to look at the example of that. Go back to Numbers 15 now, verse 32. Numbers 15, verse 32 again. Numbers chapter 15, verse 32. And while the children of Israel were in the wilderness, they found a man that gathered sticks upon the Sabbath day. So you see, he was gathering sticks upon the Sabbath day. Really? And Among they found, and they that found him gathering sticks brought him unto Moses and Aaron and unto all the congregation. Come on. And they put him inward because it was not declared what should be done to him. So now verse 34 says, and they put him in what? Meaning what? He was held in custody until what should be what should be decided until the, 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 the judges should decide what should be done to him. Okay? So they put him in, he, he was in a holding cell. That's what it means when it says he was in war. Not in what? In war. He was in a holding cell. Okay? Read verse 34 again. Numbers chapter 15, verse 34. And they put him in ward because it was not declared what should be done to him. Really? And the Lord said unto Moses, The man shall surely be put to, shall be surely put to death. Mm -hmm. All the congregation shall stone him with stones without the camp. Outside of the camp, meaning this man must be put to death. Because remember now what is he understand what's going on here. Verse 33, okay, verse 33, watch this. Read verse 33, read verse 33. Numbers chapter 15, verse 33. And they, and they that found him gathering sticks brought him unto Moses and Aaron 
and unto all the congregation. Watch this. He says, they that found him. They that, what is that mean, they that found him? Give me the book of uh, Leviticus 5 and 1. They that found him, okay? They that found him, Leviticus 5 and 1. These are witnesses now, okay? Leviticus 5 and 1. Leviticus chapter 5 is 1. Mm -hmm. And if a soul sin and hear the voice of swearing and is a witness. Is a what? And is a witness. And is a witness. Go ahead. Whether he hath seen or known of it. If he do not utter it, then he shall bear his iniquity. You see that thing? If he do not utter it, he shall bear his iniquity. So they saw it, they understood that they saw it, the Lord is seen that they see it. What you gonna do? Okay, go back to where was that? Numbers 15, verse 33 again. Numbers chapter 15, verse 33. Mm -hmm. And they that found him gathering sticks brought him unto Moses and Aaron and unto all the congregation. Remember, these are witnesses now, they witnessed this thing. So now they're bringing him to the judges so the judges can judge the man. That's how it was done in Israel. You understand? You see something? Go to the leadership to give you the sense of how this matter should be handled. You understand? Read. And they put him in ward because it was not declared what should be done to him. There you go. Come on. And the Lord said unto Moses, the man shall surely, shall be surely put to death. Mm -hmm. All the congregation shall stone him with stones without the camp. You see what the Lord said to Moses? And the Lord said unto Moses, the man shall be surely put to death. This is the Lord advising Moses on what to do. Because what is this thing? Moses went to the Lord to ask him, what should be done in this situation? Okay, come on, go ahead. And all the congregation brought him without the camp and stoned him with stones, and he died. As the Lord commanded Moses. As the Lord commanded Moses. Shortly after that, what did the Lord do? Next verse. The Most High has always been showing us mercy, actually. You understand? What? This is the mercy right here. Next verse. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, mm -hmm. Speak unto the children of Israel, and bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments really? throughout, their throughout their generations. Come on. And that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue. Really? And it shall be unto you for a fringe that ye may look up upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord and do them, and that ye seek not after your own heart and your own eyes, after which ye used to go a whoring. You see that thing? That's exactly what that brother was doing. And when the witnesses saw him, they brought him unto the judges so the judges can judge the matter. What was the judgment? Death. You understand? That was the judgment. Now go back to Exodus 20. Exodus 20, read verse 10 again. Exodus chapter 20, verse 10. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. Thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor, that, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. So now, the judgment back then for breaking the Sabbath was what? Death. Okay, now the Lord is saying, you know what? Let me uh, come up with something that is going to help them to remember so they don't break my commandment. The fringe is what instituted. Okay, watch this. Let's just piggyback on that because we read in Exodus 35, verse 3 down, that um, six days shall thou labor, but the seventh day, no working. If, anyone that, uh, if anybody that labors on that day, they shall surely be put to death. That's what we read in Numbers chapter 15, okay? Now, the Apostle Paul, he rehashes the history. But under Christ, this is the method on how we get these things done under Christ. Give me that in Hebrews 10, 28. I'm just going to touch on what we just read. The Apostle Paul mentions of it. He makes mention of what we just read, okay? Hebrews 10, 28. Read that. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 28. He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. That's what we just read. You understand? That there was condemnation. You were put to death. Okay, watch this. Now, give me John 1.17. John chapter 1. Because this is what Christ did. 
You understand? This is what Christ brought to us. John chapter 1, verse 17. Read that. John chapter 1, verse 17. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Read verse 17 again. John chapter 1, verse 17. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. You see that thing? The law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. What is grace? Give me that in Titus 2, verse 11. But grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Truth is the law. Grace is mercy. You've been given a chance to get yourself right. So that grace is, is a chance for you to get, to get it together by applying the laws of God. You are given a grace period to get it together. Titus 2, verse 11. Read that. The book of Titus, chapter 2, verse 11. Mm -hmm. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. So the subject matter here is about the grace that bringeth salvation that has appeared to all men, all men of Israel, if you read verse 14 down. Go ahead. Teaching us that, denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. In this present world. So grace, the job of grace is to us is to teach us to deny ungodliness. What does that mean? What, what do we need to do? We need to rehearse. Okay, we need to rehearse the righteous acts of the Most High. We need to rehearse. So that's how grace is going to teach us to deny ungodliness, things that go against the laws of God. That's what grace is designed for, to teach us to deny ungodliness. All right, now go back to John chapter 1, verse 17. John chapter 1, verse 17. Mm -hmm. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. You see that thing? Mercy and the law came by Jesus Christ because grace is designed to do what? To teach us to deny ungodliness. You understand? So, because grace is supposed to teach you to do what? To stop breaking the Sabbath. Grace is supposed to teach you to observe the high holidays, the dietary laws, the civil laws, the moral laws, the ceremonial laws, and so forth. Okay? That's what grace is supposed to teach you, to deny godliness and take on the laws of God and apply it to your life. That's how grace, that's, that's when grace is going to benefit you. You understand? Give me that in 2nd Ezra chapter 9. Because Ezra, he talks about this thing. 2nd Ezra chapter 9. Start verse 11. 2nd Ezra chapter 9 verse 11. And they that have loathed my law. Actually, you know what? While they yet Start at, have... Hold on. Start at verse 9. Second book of Ezra, chapter 9, verse 9. Then shall they be in pitiful case, which now have abused my ways. Which have what? Have abused my ways. It's as those that would be in pitiful case, is those that are abusing the ways of the law. What does it mean to abuse the ways of the law? Give me that in Galatians uh, 15, Galatians 5, verse 13. Galatians 5, verse 13. Read that. Galatians chapter 5, verse 13. Mm -hmm. Come on. For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Ye have been what? Ye have been called unto liberty. So when he says brethren, who is he talking to? Talk about that. He's talking to the 12 tribes of Israel. Brethren. Brethren. Call that. Give me Romans 9. Romans chapter 9, verse 4. He says, brethren, for ye have been called unto liberty. Romans chapter 9, start verse 4. The book of Romans chapter 9, verse 4. Mm -hmm. Who are Israelites to whom pertains the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of God and the promises? Okay, let's see when it says who are Israelites. Who are these Israelites that the Apostle Paul is speaking about? Read verse 3 now. Jump up to verse 3. The book of Romans, chapter 9, verse 3. Mm -hmm. For I could wish that myself were accursed from Christ for my brethren. For my what? My brethren. For my brethren. Jump down to verse 4. Let's see who Paul's brethren is. Verse 4 now. Who are Israelites? You see that thing? That's the brethren is making reference to. Go back to Galatians now. Galatians 5, verse 13. Again. 
the book of Galatians, chapter 5, verse 13. Mm -hmm. For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Ye have been called unto liberty. Meaning what? Grace. The grace of Christ. Come on. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, mm -hmm. but by love serve one another. You see what he's saying right there? It says only use not. Use not. This is a commandment. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh. Meaning don't abuse the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Don't abuse the grace. That's what he's saying right there. Okay. Now go back to 2nd Ezra 9, verse 9 again. Second book of Ezra, chapter 9, verse 9. Mm -hmm. Then shall they be in pitiful case, Come on. which now have abused my ways. You see that thing? They have abused the liberty that we have in Christ Jesus. They have abused it. I mean, you keep sinning, keep breaking the laws over and over, but you don't repent. The test, the, 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 there's always a test that comes upon you. You understand? But you always fail the test. Okay? But guess what? You look at our, our brothers and sisters in the Christian church, they are abusing the ways of the Lord. They are abusing God's command. They are abusing the grace of Christ. Because they say, I can be a homosexual. I can be a homemonger. I can be a liar. I can cheat. I can smoke. You understand? I can steal, so on and so forth. And say, no, on, 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 on Sunday, they go to church. They are abusing the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. You understand? Same thing. It's not just in the Christian church. In Israel, too. In Israel, also. You understand? Read that again, verse 9. Second book of Esther, chapter 9, verse 9. Mm -hmm. Then shall they be in pitiful case, mm -hmm. which now have abused my ways. Come on. And they that have cast them away despitefully shall dwell in torment. So those that, the, the, the ones that will be in pitiful case, they are the ones that have cast away the laws of God despitefully. You understand? They hated God's commandments. Read on. Verse 10. For such as in their life have received benefits and have not known me. You see that thing? It says, for such as in their life have received benefits. What are the benefits? Like today, what are we doing? We are doing our absolute best to do what? To keep the laws of God. We are making an effort. Our people out there, they are not making an effort. You understand? They are receiving benefits. Because Friday night, where are they at? They go to the shop, they go to the restaurant, so on and so forth. They don't have to think about the consequences of their actions. You understand? Their moral compass is gone. You understand? So that's the benefit. Get rich or die trying. That's the benefit. Okay? They have sold their soul to do what? To be part of the world. That's the benefit. The benefit the world wants them because they love the world. They are of the world. Therefore, the, lo the world loves those that Apart. Okay, I'm paraphrasing, but it's in the book of John somewhere. Okay, read on, verse 11. And they that have loathed my law mm -hmm. while they had yet liberty. Liberty is the grace that we read about in verse 9 when it says, They shall then shall they be in pitiful case which have not which now have abused my way. The liberty is the grace we read in Titus 2. Read on. And when as yet place of repentance was open unto them. The place of repentance is open for our people, within and without. Okay, come on. The place of repentance was open unto them, understood not, but despised it. But they despised the place of repentance that was, under, what was open unto them. The place of repentance is what? The laws of God being taught to you so you can repent and get yourself right. So that's what he's going into right here. All right. Now, go back, go back to, um, go back to Exodus chapter 20, verse 10. Exodus chapter 20, verse 10. Mm -hmm. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy men servant, nor thy maid servant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. So now, what we are reading here is that we're supposed to rest, just like the Lord rested when, during the creation account. 
we're supposed to do the same thing because this law was ordained for all the sons of God, which was called back then, and for all the 12 tribes, which was called, which we was called after the flood. Okay, read on, verse 11. For in six days, the Lord made heaven and earth, mm -hmm. the sea, and all that in them is, read. and rested the seventh day. Wherefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. So now what we're reading is says, and rested the seventh day. He rested the seventh day. Go back to Genesis chapter 2, verse 1 again. We're going to read to verse 3. Genesis 2, verse Genesis 1 to 3. Chapter 2, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. Come on. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had made. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had made. What did you And write? God blessed the seventh day. Come on. And sanctified it because that in it, he had rested from all his work, which God created and made. So now what we're reading here is, is what the Lord did on the seventh day. He rested from all his work. The same command that Moses gave to us, Moses is not giving us anything new. He's getting it all the way back from Genesis. You understand? Watch this. Before we are, before I deal with that, give me Exodus 31 verse 12. Exodus 31 verse 12. Let's start there. Exodus chapter 31 and verse 12. Read that. The book of Exodus chapter 31 verse 12. Come on. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Mm -hmm. Speak thou also unto the children of Israel, say, Verily my Sabbath ye shall keep, for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations, that ye may know that I am the Lord that doth sanctify you. So now, what Moses is commanding us here, he's saying, listen, he's rehearsing the history because why? Because Israel is a baby. He's making sure that we don't have, we don't have the thing of saying, I didn't know. So that's why he keeps coming up over and over on what we need to do. One of those examples of what we need to do is regarding the Sabbath day, how to keep it holy. Okay? Because remember, we just read in Exodus 20, Exodus 31, he's going over it again. You understand? It says, Verily, my Sabbath ye shall keep. Because for, for me, because it is a sign between me and you throughout your generation, meaning forever. As long as we're still generating upon this earth, we shall keep the Sabbath day. Go ahead, verse 14. Verse 14. Ye shall keep the Sabbath, therefore, for it is holy unto you. Everyone that defileth it shall surely be put to death. For whosoever doeth any work therein, that soul shall be cut off from among his people. You see that thing? Cut off means put to death. That's what it means. Cut off from among his people means that soul will be put to death. That's what we read in the book of Numbers, chapter 16, down. 16, verse 32, down. Okay, read on. Six days may work be done, but in the seventh is the Sabbath of rest. Holy to the Lord. Whosoever doeth any work in the Sabbath day, he shall surely be put to death. So he keep repeating it over and over. What are we doing under Christ now? We still keep the Sabbath because it says throughout your generation. As long as we're still generating, we must suppose to keep the Sabbath day. Wherefore, the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath to observe the Sabbath throughout their generations for a perpetual covenant. For a perpetual covenant for an ever for an everlasting command, for an everlasting agreement. Read on. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. Come on. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. So on the seventh day the Lord rested, there, there's that word again, he rested and was refreshed. Now, give me the book of Isaiah, Give me the book of Isaiah chapter 14 and verse 1. Actually, you know what? Before you get me that, give me the book of uh, give me the book of Job chapter 11, verse 6. Job 11 and verse 6. The book of Job chapter 11, verse 6. 
and that he would show thee the secrets of wisdom that they are double to that which is. Go ahead. Know therefore that God exacted of thee less than thine iniquity deserves. So what Job is teaching us is that the scriptures have double meaning. That's why it says, you will show thee the secrets of wisdom. The secrets of wisdom is the dark things and the double meaning, the triple meaning. Could you pick it up again? Verse 6, Job 11. Job chapter 11 verse 6. And that he would show thee the secrets of wisdom, mm -hmm. that they are double to that which is. Read. Know therefore that God exacted of thee less than thine iniquity deserveth. So now, what we're reading here, the scriptures of double meaning, okay? It says that they are double to that which is. When it says that which is, meaning that which is written. The scriptures are double to that which is written, okay? Give me the book of Isaiah chapter 14, start at verse 1. Isaiah 14 verse 1. Remember, it says, the Lord rested. He rested from all his work that he created and made. Isaiah 14 and 1. Let's start there. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 1. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob mm -hmm. and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land. And the strangers shall be joined with them and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. Read verse 1 again. One more again. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 1. Uh -huh. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob. Stop right there. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob. That goes into the sacrifice that Christ made. It says the Lord will. This is a future prophecy. It goes into the sacrifice that Christ will make for the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. And is also going into the second coming of the Lord. You understand? That's why it says that for the, because the Lord will. Future prophecy will have mercy on Jacob. Okay, give me that in Acts chapter 5. Acts, actually, give me Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 1 and verse 21. Matthew 1, 21. Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. For he, because he shall save his people from their sin. Give me that in uh, Matthew 2, verse 6. Let's see who his people are. Matthew 2 and 6, read that. Matthew chapter 2, verse 6. Come on. And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not the least among the princes of Judah. For out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. It says, that shall rule my people Israel. So the people that he was going to save from their sins is his people Israel. Okay? How would he do that? Give me that in Acts 5 now. Acts chapter 5 and 29. Start of a stage. Let's just pick it up from there. Acts chapter 5 is 30. The book of Acts chapter 5 is 30. Mm -hmm. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom ye slew and hanged on the tree. Read. Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance unto Israel and forgiveness of sins. You see that thing right there? That's how that's why it says, for the Lord will have mercy on Jacob. That is the mercy. You understand? Another part of the understanding is that when is when the Lord returns. Okay? Luke 168. Let's start there. Come on. The book of Luke, chapter 1, verse 68. Mm -hmm. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath, hath visited and redeemed his people. Has what? For he hath visited and redeemed his people. For he has visited and redeemed his people. There's a scripture. Hold on. Uh, Job 19.25. Read that. Job chapter 19, verse 25. For I know that my redeemer liveth. My what? And that he, for I know that my redeemer liveth. For I know that my redeemer liveth. Go ahead. And that he shall stand at the latter day he upon the earth. Hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Read that part again. Job 19.25. The book of Job, chapter 19, verse 25. Mm -hmm. For I know that my Redeemer liveth. Go ahead. And that he shall stand 
at the latter day upon the earth. He shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. He's not talking about what? He's not, Job is not prophesying about the, the time when Christ walked the earth. He's not talking about during the time of Rome. Because during the time of Rome, that's what the evil one thought. That's what our forefathers thought, that Christ is coming to save his people from their sin. That wasn't the time. You understand? Job is letting us know he's talking about the last day, which is what? The second coming of the Lord. That's why it says, for I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. Go ahead. And though after my skin, worms shall destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God. Okay, now that, 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 that's something else there, because I don't want to touch that today. Okay, give me the book. Give me the book of Isaiah. Give me Isaiah chapter 44. Verse 6, give me that. Isaiah chapter 44, verse 6. Mm -hmm. Thus saith the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first, and I am the last, and beside me there is no God. You see that thing right there? I am the first and the last, beside me there is no God. The key is that thus saith the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, because the Lord is our Redeemer. You understand? He says, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people. What is this talking about? What is Zachariah prophesying about? He's prophesying about the last day. You understand? Had redeemed his people. You understand? Meaning what? Redemption at this point has happened already. We have been delivered. You understand? That's what he's saying right there. Okay. Uh, go back to Luke 158. Luke chapter 1, verse 68. Mm -hmm. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people. Come on. And hath raised up an horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. Because it's going to come through the lineage of King David. Come on. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began. Because he declared the end from the beginning. Come on. That we should be saved from our enemies mm -hmm. and from the hand of all that hate us. You see that thing? That we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. Now go back to Isaiah 14. I'm building it up to someone. Isaiah 14 verse 1 again. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 1. Mm -hmm. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land. And the strangers shall be joined with them and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. Now watch this. Now this is future prophecy, the second coming of Christ. Okay? That's why he says, and set them in their own land. Remember, Isaiah was during the which, which time period? Isaiah, because Isaiah and Hosea, they were prophesying at the same time period. They were prophesying to the same king. You understand that was ruling during that time. So Isaiah was during the time of the Assyrian. He prophesied towards the beginning of the Assyrian Empire. Okay. He prophesied about the Assyrian Empire coming to Babylon. I mean, coming to, to our land to overthrow us, meaning Northern Kingdom. Okay. Now watch this. Jump down to verse 3. Mm -hmm. This is the part we want to get to. Verse 3 now. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 3. Mm -hmm. And it shall come to pass in the day that the Lord shall give thee rest from thy sorrow. Go ahead. And from thy fear and from the hard bondage wherein thou wast made to serve. That's when the Lord will have mercy on Jacob. When it shall come, it shall come to pass. In the day that the Lord shall give thee rest from thy sorrow. You understand? Because the sorrow, when did the sorrow start? The sorrow started when, when, when Adam and Eve sinned. That's when the beginning of sorrow. They began in Genesis already. You understand? So from that time, we've been, we've been, we've been, we've been uh, being punished from what? From the time when Adam and Eve sinned unto this day. You understand? 
So now he's saying it shall come to pass in the day that the Lord shall give thee rest from thy sorrow. Because we are sorrowful this day as a nation. Wherever we are scattered, we are sorrowful. Watch this. Give me the book of Hebrews 4 verse 1. Okay? The Lord is going to give us rest from our soul. Watch this. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 1. Because we right now we are rehearsing the righteous acts. Before you get me there, give me Judges 5 verse 11. We are rehearsing the righteous acts of the Lord. Okay? The book of Judges chapter 5 verse 11. They that are delivered from the noise of archers in the place of drawing water, they shall they rehearse the righteous acts of the Lord, even the righteous acts toward the inhabitants of his villages in Israel. Then shall the people of the Lord go down to the gates. So now, it says they, they that are delivered from the noise of archers. We are not delivered from the noise of archers yet. Okay? Because an archer doesn't make a noise. A normal archer, bow and arrow, it don't make no noise. So our foremother, Deborah, obviously, she's prophesying about what? The last day. Because today we do have archers that make noise. What is that? ICBM missile. Nuclear weapon. That's what she's prophesying about. Okay? In the places of drawing water. The places of drawing water is talking about the lands of our captivity. Okay? Watch this. Let's get a precept on that because let's get the book of Joshua real quick. Joshua chapter 10. Give me Joshua 10 verse 21. The places of drawing water. I mean Joshua 9. Joshua 9 verse 21. The book of Joshua chapter 9 verse 21. And the princes said unto them, let them live, but let, but let them be hewers of wood and drawers of water unto all the congregation, as the princes had promised them. You see that thing? It says, let them. Who is that then? Jump up to verse 1, Joshua 9 and 1. Joshua chapter 9, verse 1. And it came to pass, when all the kings which were on the side Jordan, in the hills and in the valleys, and in, the, and in all the coasts of the great sea, over against Lebanon, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites heard thereof. So now remember Joshua, we were destroying these nations, okay, under Joshua. We were destroying these nations. So these kings, you understand, these, these Amorite kings, they realized, you know what, let's join forces with Joshua. You understand, these, Ammon these Amorites, they said, let's join forces with Joshua. So we can be under them. You understand? Because we've seen the things that he's done in Jericho. You understand? We've seen that thing. So we want to join themselves unto them. So now jump down to this 21 again. So that then is making reference to these Amorites. Okay? Verse 21 again. Joshua chapter 9, verse 21. And the princes said unto them, Let them live, but let them be hewers of wood and drawers of water unto all the congregation as the princes had promised them. You see that thing? So now, it says, let them, let them live, but let them be shewers of wood and drawers of water unto all the congregation, meaning servants, slaves. Jump down to verse 23. Verse 23. Now therefore, ye are cursed, and there shall none of you be freed from being born men. You see that thing? That's the, the key here is verse 23. It says, now therefore ye are cursed, and there shall none of you be freed from being born men. You see what hewers of wood and drawers of waters are? Slaves. That's what Deborah, our foremother, is talking about when it says, they that are delivered from the noise of arches in the places of drawing water, where we are slaves, who are serving hard bondage to our enemies. Verse 23 again. Joshua chapter 9, verse 23. Now, therefore, ye are cursed, and there shall none of you be freed from being bondmen, and hewers of wood and jaws of water for the house of my God. Jump down to verse 27. Verse 27. And Joshua made them that day hewers of wood and jaws of water for the congregation and for the altar of the Lord, even unto this day, in the place 
which he should choose. In the place which he shall choose, let's talk about our homeland. That's how we would deal with uh, the other nations. You understand? Okay, now go back to Judges 5 verse 11. Judges chapter 5 verse 11. Mm -hmm. They that are delivered from the noise of archers in the place of joy, in the places of drawing water. In the places. There shall in, they rehearse wait, the right. Wait, wait. In the places of drawing water. So the places of drawing water in the lands of our captivity, where the Lord has scattered us to serve hard bondage. He says, there shall they rehearse the righteous acts of the Lord. The Sabbath day is one of those righteous acts. We are rehearsing the righteous acts. This rehearsal is preparation for the big day. You understand? Watch this. Go to Hebrews now, 4 verse 1. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 1. The book of Hebrews chapter 4 verse 1. Mm -hmm. Let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left, being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. So now, you see what he, who is he talking to? Jump up to the previous chapter, Hebrews 3, verse 17. Start at verse 16, Hebrews 3, verse 16. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 16. For some, when they had heard, did provoke. Howbeit, not all that came out of Egypt by Moses. Not all that came out of Egypt by Moses. Who came out of Egypt by Moses? The 12 tribes of Israel. Come on. But with whom was he greed, grieved for 40 years? 12 tribes. Was it not? Hold on. It says, but with whom was he grieved 40 years? Come on. Was it not with them that had sinned, whose carcasses fell in the wilderness? You see that thing, whose dead bodies fell in the wilderness. Meaning that, that generation, the most that God put them to death. Jump up, jump, jump, jump over now, chapter 4, verse 1 again. Hebrews 4, verse 1. Let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left of us of bring into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. Should, should, should seem to come short of the what the promise being left us of entering into his rest. We're gonna deal with that rest this day. Go ahead, verse 2. Hmm. Verse 2. For unto us was the gospel preached. For what? The gospel preached. For unto us was the gospel preached. Who's the us that was the gospel preached to? The people we read about in chapter 3, verse 17. Those that grieved Moses 40 years in the wilderness, those are the same people that the gospel was preached to. That's us this day. Go ahead. For unto us was the gospel preached, as well as unto them. But the word preached, the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard them. Because the gospel that was preached to us in the wilderness, what was that? The laws of God. Who taught us the gospel? Moses taught us the gospel. Okay, it says, as well as unto them. Who the them? Our forefathers that was in the wilderness. Okay, but the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it, because our, our forefathers did not believe. You understand? There was a people that was void of faith. Okay? Watch this. Jump down to verse 8 now. No, no, read verse 4. Let me see, let me see. Keep reading, keep reading. Read verse 3. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 3. For we which have believed do enter into rest. As he said, as I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished, from the foundation of the world. The work that was finished from the foundation of the world took about the doing away with the law of sacrifice. Come on. For he spake in a certain place of the seventh day on this wise. What did he do? And God did rest the seventh day. Hold on. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Uh, Hebrews 4. Hebrews 4 verse 4. The book of Hebrews chapter 4 verse 4. For he spake in a certain place of the seventh day on this wise. On this what? On this wise. On this wise. So he's letting you know, listen, I'm going to drop some wisdom on you. That's what he's saying. Come on. 
and God did rest the seventh day from all his works. That's what we read in, in Genesis chapter 2, verse 2 to 3. That's what he was reading. Come on. And in this place again, if they shall enter into my rest. It says, and in this place again, if they shall enter into my rest. He's going to explain what that verse is. Jump down to verse 8. Let's see the rest that we're going to enter into. Go ahead. Verse 8. For if Jesus had given them rest, then would he not afterward have spoken of another day? You see, you see that thing? Read verse 8 again. Read it slow for me. The book of Hebrews chapter 4 verse 8. Mm -hmm. For if Jesus had given them rest, then would he not afterward have spoken of another day? You see that thing? is that Because if Jesus, if Christ has given them rest, because the Lord has not given us rest yet. You understand? If Christ had given us rest, then would he not afterwards have spoken of another day? What another day is making reference to? Watch this. Read verse 9. There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. Is that there remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. Read verse 8 and 9 together so you can understand what is being said here. Come on. The book of Hebrews chapter 4 verse 8. Mm -hmm. For if Jesus had given them rest, then would he not afterward have spoken of another day? Come on. There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. Because Christ has not given us rest yet. He has not given us rest. That's why he spoke unto us of another day of rest. That's why says, there remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. Give me that in uh, 2 Peter 3, verse 8. 2 Peter 3 verse 8. Let's deal with that another day of another day, another day that Christ spoke unto us that he's gonna give to us, the people of God. You understand? 2 Peter 3 verse 8. Read that. Second book of Peter, chapter 3, verse 8. Mm -hmm. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing: that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. So you see that thing, one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years, with the, and a thousand years, um, and as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. So to us, a thousand years to us is one day with the Lord. Now, go back to Hebrews 4. Hebrews 4 verse 8 again. The book of Hebrews chapter 4 verse 8. Mm -hmm. For if Jesus had given them rest, then would he not afterward have spoken of another day? Another day is talking about what? It's talking about another day of rest. The true Sabbath day. Because the true Sabbath day is that another day of rest that Christ spoke of through Isaiah in Isaiah 14 verse 1. You understand? Isaiah 14 verse 1 being explained more detailed in Isaiah 14 verse 3. That the Lord will give us rest from our sorrow and from the hard bondage we're with. We are made to serve. So that's another day of rest. It took about a thousand years of rest. Okay? That's part of the first resurrection. Give me that in Revelation 20 verse 5. I'm not going to go too deep on this, but I'll, when I go over Revelation 20, I, it will be plain. Okay? Revelation 20 and verse 5. Read that. The book of Revelation chapter 20 verse 5. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. Read. This is the first resurrection. So this is the first resurrection. So when the Lord returns, you understand? Those people that will be alive on that day when the Lord returns, guess what? Those also that are dead, that will also be part of the, the dead in Christ will rise first. You understand? When the Lord returns, they will be resurrected first. Those will be part of the first resurrection and those that will be alive when the most die, when the Lord makes the second coming. It will happen at noonday, by the way. Noonday, 12 p.m. That's when the Lord will make his second coming. Nobody knows the day, but the Lord gave us clues on, on what day, what it's going to look like. It's going to be at midday. You understand? When people are having their lunches, they are eating and drinking, that's when the Lord will make his second coming. He will descend with his with his truth. Okay? Some heavy stuff right there. Read that again, verse 5. 
the book of Revelations, chapter 20, verse 5. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. Mm -hmm. This is the first resurrection. Because there are those that are going to be part of the first resurrection, which will be reigning with Christ for a thousand years. Then will be the second resurrection that will happen after a thousand years. Go ahead. Verse 6. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. You see that thing? It says, blessed is he that hath part in the first resurrection. Come on. On such, the second death had no power. You see that thing? But the, hold on. The second, the second death had no power. Meaning what? No more death. That's what it says. See? But they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. That's the, that's the true Sabbath right there. Right now when we're observing the Sabbath, this is rehearsal time. We're rehearsing the righteous act. Okay? We are we're going to observe the true Sabbath when we rule with Christ for a thousand years as part of the first resurrection. So when we observe in the Sabbath day like this, guess what? We are preparing for the true Sabbath that's coming. That, 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 that another day that the Apostle Paul was explaining in Hebrews 4. Okay? Read on. Verse 7. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. That's talk about the white man. After a thousand years are expired, then the white man will be loosed from captivity. And guess what's going to happen? Give me that in Obadiah. Obadiah. The other nations will be in captivity too. Don't get it twisted. Everybody going to be slaves. Give me that in Obadiah. Let me see what verse I want. Verse 17. Read that. The book of Obadiah, verse 17. Mm -hmm. But upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance. Come on. And there shall be holiness. And the house of Jacob shall possess their possessions. Read. And the house of Jacob shall be a fire. And the house of Joseph a flame. And the house of Esau for stubble. And they shall kindle in them and devour them. And there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau. For the Lord had spoken it. You see that thing? After that thousand years, then they are going to be killed off. Okay? So now, let's go back to Hebrews now. Chapter 4, verse 8. Hebrews 4, verse 8. One more again. The book of Hebrews, chapter 4, verse 8. Mm -hmm. For if Jesus had given them rest, then would he not afterward have spoken of another day? Another day took about the thousand years of rest. The true Sabbath in the kingdom. Okay, come on. There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. You see that thing? The, the true Sabbath is coming. Right now we are rehearsing the righteous act. Come on. For he that is entered into his rest, he also hath ceased from his own works as God did from his. Because that's when we're going to give be given rest from our sorrow and from the hard bondage wherein we were made, we was made to serve. Watch this. Give me the book of Psalms 149 verse 1. Okay? Psalms 149 verse 1. It says, They remain as therefore a rest to the people of God. Psalms 149, start of verse 1. The book of Psalms. Chapter 149, verse 1. Praise ye the Lord. Sing unto the Lord a new song and his praise in the congregation of saints. Come on. Let Israel rejoice in him that made him. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Go ahead. Let them praise his name in the dance. Let them sing praises unto him with the timbrel and harp. That's right. Come on. For the Lord had taken pleasure in his people. He will beautify the meek with salvation. The Lord will beautify the meek. The meek is those that are obedient to his word. He will beautify us with salvation, glory of the kingdom, deliverance, okay, from oppression. Come on. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. You see that thing? Let them sing aloud upon their beds. That's when we're going to be delivered. We are going to be given rest from our sorrow and from the hard bondage within we was made to serve. 
Go back to Hebrews now, 4 verse 10. Hebrews 4 verse 10. The book of Hebrews chapter 4 verse 10. For he, he that is entered into his rest, mm -hmm. he also had ceased from his own works as God did from his. So when we are given rest from, from hard bondage, from slavery, captivity, confusion, you understand? Apartheid, colonization and all that. The same way that the Lord rested from his work that he had made on the seventh day, guess what? We also going to be given rest. Okay, read on, verse 11. Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest. Let us what? Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest. He says we must labor. Now we must labor in pain. Be in pain and labor to bring forth. We must labor to bring forth Zion, like a woman in Shabbat. We meaning what? It's going to be painful, brothers and sisters, to labor, but we need to endure. Go ahead. Lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. Because the same example of unbelief is our forefathers that did not believe that fell in the wilderness. That's what the Apostle Paul is referencing here. Okay. Now, let's go back. Exodus. Exodus 20. Let's read verse 11 again. Exodus chapter 20. Verse 11. Mm -hmm. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore, the Lord blessed the seventh day and hallowed it. The Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Watch this. Verse 12 now. Now we deal with the Sabbath. Okay. Next verse. The book of Exodus chapter 20 verse 12. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Now, this is a heavy commandment right here. It says, honor thy mother and thy father. Now, watch this. Give me Sirach 3 verse 1. Chapter 3 verse 1. Sirach 3 verse 1. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 3 verse 1. Mm -hmm. Hear me, your father. O children, and do thereafter that ye may be safe. So now this is a command of a father to the children, okay? You talk about also going into the fathers on earth and the father which is in heaven. Read that again, verse 1. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Hear me, your father, O children, and do thereafter that ye may be safe. Watch this, that you may be saved, that you may live long upon the earth. Give me that in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 1. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 1. The book of Proverbs chapter 4, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Hear, ye children, the instruction of a father, and attend to no understanding. You see that thing? Hear, ye children, the instruction of a father and attend to no understanding. Meaning what? Open your spiritual ears and eyes so you can know understand the laws of God. That's what he's saying. Go back to Sarah 3 verse 1. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3 verse 1. Hear me, your father, all children, and do thereafter that ye may be safe. Read. For the Lord hath given the father honor over the children, and has confirmed the authority of the mother over the sons. So there's an order there, okay? Is the, is the father, the woman, the children. The father gives command like our forefather Abraham did. Hold on. Please. Okay, read that again, verse 2. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3, verse 2. For the Lord hath given the father honor over the children, and has confirmed the authority of the mother over the sons. So now the mother has authority over the sons through the father's command. Come on. Whoso honoreth his father maketh an atonement for his sins. You see that thing? You must honor your father according to the law, according to the scriptures, the command. Read. And he that honoreth his mother 
is as one that layeth up treasure. Because it's not just honoring your, ma- your father only, but you must honor your father and your mother, according to Exodus 20, verse 12. See? Whoso honoreth his father shall have joy of his own children, and when he maketh his prayer, he shall be heard. Mm. Whoso honors his father shall have joy of his own children. Because guess what? You understand when you honor your father, your children will honor you. It's a chain of command. Okay, come on. He that honoreth his father shall have a long life. And he that is obedient unto the Lord shall be a comfort to his mother. You see that thing? So this goes into what? This goes into following command, following instruction, applying exactly as you are told to do, not going left or right. Because Israel, they like to find loopholes. These laws, a lot of these laws are written in this book, they were written as child proof, it's like child proof laws for Israel, because Israel is wicked as hell. Like Exodus 22 15, that law that it was written for wicked, black, ashy demons that wanted to vibe and grind to go against the laws of God. But for the, from the beginning, it was not so. You understand? Read that again. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 3, verse 6. He that honoreth his father shall have a long life, mm-hmm. and he that is obedient unto the Lord shall be a comfort to his mother. You're going to comfort your mother with what? The laws of God, by your conduct. Come on. He that feareth the Lord will honor his father mm-hmm. and will do service unto his parents as to his masters. Watch this. Read verse 7 again. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 3, verse 7. Mm-hmm. He that feareth the Lord will honor his father and will do service unto his parents now, as to it? his masters. It says, he that honoreth, he that feareth the Lord will honor his father. Watch this. Give me Second Kings, chapter 2, verse 23. Second Kings, chapter 2, verse 23, very quick. Second Kings chapter two. Start at verse twenty-two. Start at verse twenty-two. Mm-hmm. Second Kings chapter two verse twenty-two. So the waters were healed unto this day, according to the saying of Elisha, which he spoke. So now this is Elisha, okay? Elisha now Elijah is gone. Elisha is now with his servant. Let's just watch what happens now. Come on, verse twenty-three. And he went up from thence unto Bethel. And as he was going up by the way, there came forth little children out of the city and mocked him and said unto him, Go up, thou bold head. Go up, thy bold head. You see what they are doing? They were mocking him. They were disrespecting Elisha. Watch what happens next. Go ahead. And he turned back and looked on them and cursed them in the name of the Lord. And there came forth two sheep bears out of the wood and tear 40 and two children of them. You see what the Lord did? The Lord allowed Elijah to have these children, little children put to death because they were black ashy demons disrespecting the elders. Here is that. That's why it says, honor your father and your mother. You understand? Go back to where he was at. Go back to Sirach, chapter 3, verse 7 again. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 3, verse 7. He that feareth the Lord will honor his father and will do service unto his parents as to his masters. Mm -hmm. Come on. Honor thy father and mother, both in word and deed, that uh, that a blessing may come upon thee from them. Come on. For the blessing of the father establisheth the houses of children, but the curse of the mother rooteth out foundations. You see that thing? For the blessing of the father established the houses of children, because the father says the order. You understand? And the mother, what does she do? She nurtures the children. You understand? That is the order that the Lord has set up. Okay? Watch this. Give me Matthew 15, verse 3. Matthew chapter 15. Verse 3. The book of Matthew, chapter 15, verse 3. 
Mm -hmm. But he answered and said unto them, why do you also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? He's going to explain what those one of those traditions are. Not all of them, but one of those traditions. Read on. For God commanded, saying, Honor thy father and mother, and he that curseth father or mother, let him die the death. You see that thing? Just like those children were put to death, disrespectful children. Watch this, verse 5. But ye say, Whosoever shall say to his father or his mother, it is a gift by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me. So the scribes and Pharisees, they were teaching that, listen, when you, when you, 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 your parents, when they, when they, when they command you to do stuff, you must not honor them. They, they, were, they were teaching the people to say, listen, I'm actually a gift unto you. That is what the scribes and Pharisees were teaching. It's the same thing going on today in the Christian church, by the way. You might be asking, how? Okay, think about it like this. Today, what did the, the so-called ministers do? They teach the people to come as you are. Okay, one. Two, they misuse scriptures so that the parents do not discipline their children, saying you abuse the children. So if, you, if a parent is being told that and the child is listening to that, guess what the child is going to do? The child is going to act like they are a gift to their parents. You understand? They're going to be disrespectful in other ways. You understand? Meaning what? Do your own thing. You understand? This is a new South Africa. You know, things have changed. Things are not the same as they were back then. That's the thought. You understand? Read that again, verse 5. The book of Matthew, chapter 15, verse 5. But ye say, Whosoever shall say to his father or his mother, it is a gift by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me. Come on. And honor not his father or his mother, mm. he shall be free. You see that thing? So they were not teaching the people to honor their parents. They were not doing it. They were not doing that thing. That's why today you see a mother and a father come to the church and the pastor and they, they have a child. Whether it's a, it's a youth whether it's a newborn baby, whatever the case may be, okay? They want the children to have rights. Don't abuse the children, meaning, because in their minds, when you correct the children, that's abuse, because that's what the government teaches, okay? Because the scribes and Pharisees, who did they report to? Rome. Rome was the governing system at the time. Today, the same thing. The government tells the people, say, listen, do not, if you discipline your child, your child has the right to call the police. The same thing. Same system it is today. Okay, come on. Verse 6 again. The book of Matthew, chapter 15, verse 6. And honor not his father or his mother, he shall be free. Thus have ye made the commandment of God none effect by your tradition. You have made the commandment of God of none effect by your tradition. Because now the child can be free from their parents. You understand? You're not my parents no more. So on and so forth. That's some evil you hear today. I'm denouncing my parents. That's the foolishness you hear, especially from the youth. Okay? So that's what the scribes and Pharisees were teaching. Watch this. Give me the book of Proverbs 30 verse 12. Because once the child is like this, guess what's going to happen? This child will be disrespectful to their parents. They're going to be disrespectful to their elders. They're not going to know how to keep their mouth shut. They're not going to know how to address those that came before them. The same thing in the truth and outside of the truth is the same demonic behavior that I'm seeing. Okay, give me Proverbs 30 verse 12. Is that thing. The book of Proverbs chapter 30 verse 12. Mm -hmm. There is a generation that are pure in their own eyes mm -hmm. and yet is not washed from their filthiness. Read that again verse 12. Some heavy stuff like this. The book of Proverbs, chapter 30, verse 12. There is a generation that are pure in their own eyes and yet is not washed from their filthiness. You see that thing? Because that type of teaching that the scribes and Pharisees was, was doing, that's exactly what they were. They were involving the people in their sin. They were teaching the people or giving them license to break the laws of God, to be disrespectful to their parents or their elders or their leaders. 
That's what he's saying here. There is a generation that is pure in their own eyes. Because, you know what, they follow their heart, how they feel, what they think. Okay? And yet, is not washed from their filthiness. Give me the book of Job, chapter 15, verse 15. Job 15, verse 15. The book of Job, chapter 15, verse 16. How much more abominable and filthy is man, which drinketh iniquity like water? You see that thing? They drink their sins like water. Because when you keep drinking, you drink. You are adding sin upon sin. You are heaping sin upon sin. He says, how much more abominable and filthy is man which drinketh iniquity like water. The same way you be drinking water, that's exactly how the Lord say. When it comes to sin, the generation that is right in their own eyes, that's what they do. They drink iniquity like what? Like what? Sin. Whatever they find, they want to let it with their cup. They want to drink it up. Okay? Watch this. Go back. Um, go back to the book of Exodus. Actually, you know what? Hmm. Give me Exodus chapter 21. Exodus chapter 21 and verse, verse 15. Exodus 21 verse 15. The book of Exodus, chapter 21, verse 15. Mm -hmm. And he that smiteth his father or his mother shall be surely put to death. You see that thing? Because today you see children beating their parents. You see it a lot, actually, uh, especially these girls that are be fighting with their mothers, that be beating their mothers up. That, because guess what? Every law that's written in this Bible is because Israel was doing it. So the laws are written in this book, they are written against what Israel was doing. What he was doing, the most High God says, write it down, because this is what these demons are doing. And guess what? When they did that, the Lord said, stone them, put them to death. That was the judgment, stone them, because they're good for nothing kids. That's what the Lord was saying. Read it again. The book of Exodus, chapter 21, verse 15. And he that smiteth his father or his mother shall be surely put to death. You see that thing? So now, watch this. Mm. Let's go to Exodus. Give me Exodus 20. I think I'm gonna, I'm, I'm just gonna leave it at that here for now. Exodus 20, verse 13 now. Watch this. The book of Exodus, chapter 20, verse 13. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not what? Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not kill. Now, that's a heavy one right there. This, this verse right here, we can spend the whole night going over this verse alone. Okay, the heavy one. Watch this. Give me, um, hmm, we're going to start it. Read, give me first John chapter 3, verse 15. Let's start there first and foremost. Okay, let's start there first. First John chapter 3, verse 15. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. Mm -hmm. And ye know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. So now, if you hate your brother, you are a murderer. And guess what? You will not see the king. Because hate, envy, anger, you understand? Seek an evil eye, they all go hand in hand. They are in the same other group, okay? Whosoever hated his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. Meaning what? You're not going to get the kingdom. Watch this. Give me Matthew 5, 21. Matthew chapter 5, verse 21. The book of Matthew chapter 5, verse 21. Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, Thou shalt not kill. Watch this. It says, ye have heard that it was said by them of what? Of all time. Now, that's some heavy stuff, ain't it? It says, it, 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 but, but I say, unto oh no, he heard that it was said by them of all time. Remember what we read in Deuteronomy 32, verse 7. It says, remember the days of old. He's, he's taking it back to the commandment. 
right, in Exodus. But guess what? He's going beyond Exodus. He's going back to Genesis chapter 4. Okay? It's going to be clear as we read down. Read verse 21 again. The book of Matthew chapter 5 verse 21. Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, mm -hmm. thou shalt not kill. Come on. And whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. Meaning what? You kill, you get killed. Okay? But listen what Christ says now. Because this law is not a new law. That's an old law from the time of Genesis. Because that's why Cain said, whosoever findeth me shall slay you. Christ is going all the way back. Okay? Watch this. Next verse. Verse 22. But I say unto you, that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. Mm -hmm. And whosoever shall say to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the council. But whosoever shall say, thou fool, shall be in danger of hell fire. So now, what Christ is explaining here, he's saying, listen, yes, he's saying, you have heard it was said by them of all time, thou shalt not kill, okay? But now he's, he's giving an example. He's going, he's taking it a step further. If you are angry with your brother for no, for no reason, you understand? Now he's taking it further than that because you can just, you can say, oh no, but um, I don't kill no one. But you are angry with your brother without a cause. The Bible says, Christ now took it a step further. It says, that's murder too. That's some heavy stuff. You understand? Because as a people, we have that tendency. It's like it's a natural thing. You just hate your brother for no reason. The brother did do nothing to you, but you just have hatred for your brother. You understand? That's that murder. That's a that's the spirit of the murder. You understand? That's why Christ explained it here so we understand. All right? Watch this. Give me the book of First John 3, verse 11. First John, chapter 3, verse 11. First book of John, chapter 3, verse 11. For this is the message that ye have heard from the beginning, mm -hmm. that we should love one another. You see that thing? This, this law right here, this is an old law. Okay? Watch this. Read on. Not as Cain. Stop right there. Now, that's some heavy stuff. It says, it was, it was, it says, for this is the message that we have heard from the beginning, from Genesis. That's the beginning means Genesis, okay? That we should love one another. Now he's going to give an example of hating your brother without a cause. He's giving an example of Cain now, taking you back to Genesis 4. Read that part again, verse, two, verse 12. First John chapter 3, verse 12. Mm -hmm. Not as Cain. Who was of that wicked one? Come on. And slew his brother. And wherefore slew he him? Because his own works were evil and his brothers were righteous. Now that's heavy right there. It says, Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, the devil, and slew his brother. Now he's going to ask the question so why did he kill his brother? You see, he says, And wherefore slew he him? Why did he kill his brother? Because his own works were evil and his brother's righteous. So the reason why he killed his brother is because his own works was evil. He was jealous of his brother. Instead of doing right, he decided, you know what, I'm not going to do right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hate my brother instead. I'm going to point the finger at my brother. Instead of actually doing what I'm commanded to do, I'm not going to do that. Mm -mm. I'm going to take the attention and focus it on my brother. That's what Cain did. You understand? That is what Cain did. Read on, verse 13. Marvel not, my brethren, if the world hate you. Read. Really? We know that we have passed from death unto life. Hold on. Because we love. It says, we know that we have passed from death unto life. Meaning what? We were spiritually dead. Now the Lord has woken us up out of our death estate. Now we entered into life. The commandments of God, the grace and mercy of our Lord and Savior. Read. Because we love the brethren. Stop right there. Now you need to think about this here. Okay. It says, we know that we have passed from death unto life. 
right? Because we love the brethren. That means if you don't want to, if you don't want to repent, you don't love the brethren. That's some heavy stuff right there. If you don't want to repent from your sin, it means you don't love the bread. You don't love your brother. You don't love your neighbor. Could you imagine that? Because our brothers and sisters that are out there, you know, doing some wicked stuff, they have not received the gospel. But can you imagine you are in the school, you are in the camp. Every single time you deal with the same problem, the council is always the same thing over and over. You don't love the brethren. There's no two ways about You don't love the brethren. Because your job, like I always say, it's not about you. You understand? It's about your people. So if you don't want to get yourself right, you hate your neighbor. Guess what that means? You are a mother in the sight of God. If you don't repent. Read again. Verse 14. First John chapter 3 verse 14. Uh -huh. We know that we have passed from death unto life. Mm -hmm. Because we love the brethren. Come on. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Because if you don't want to pass from death unto life, you don't love your brother. You hate your brother. Cain didn't want that. Cain, because that's why he's making reference to Cain. Cain did not want to pass from death unto life. Because what brings forth death? Sin. Sin brings forth death. Like it says in Romans 6 23. Sin brings forth death. Cain didn't want to take that route. You understand? Because he had the spirit of hatred on him. That's some heavy stuff. Watch this. Give me that in, um, let's go to Genesis 4, verse 3. Because this is going into Cain. So guess what? Cain didn't want to get himself right. He did not want to, uh, he did not want to self examine. Cain did not want to get himself correct. Instead, instead he took his attention from him and he put it on his brother. So that he doesn't have to deal with all his with his own issue. Okay. Genesis 4 verse 3. Read that. The book of Genesis chapter 4 verse 3. And in process of time it came to pass. That Cain brought of the fruit of the ground. An offering unto the Lord. So he brought lettuce and cucumbers. Go ahead. And Abel. He also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. Three. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. So because Abel, he brought the righteous sacrifice. Because re re remember what we read in verse John chapter 3, verse 12. Read that again, First John 3 and 12. First John chapter 3, verse 12. Mm -hmm. Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one and slew his brother and wherefore slew he him because his own works were evil and his brother's righteous. Because Cain was given, an, he was given liberty to get himself right. So while he was given liberty to get himself right, he didn't want to take the liberty. He instead what? He loathed the laws of God. He despised it. He was given a chance. Listen, if thou doest well, shall thou not be accepted? But he didn't want to do it. He wanted to just hold on to the hatred he has for his brother instead of getting himself right. Go back to Genesis 4 now. Verse 4 again. The book of Genesis, chapter 4, verse 4. And Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. Really? But unto Cain, and to his offering, he had no respect. And Cain was very wroth, mm -hmm. and his countenance fell. You see that thing? Cain was upset. He was mad. But was he justified in his anger? No. All he had to do was to get himself right. This goes into what? When you are corrected and you are afraid to get angry, you understand? Guess what? You have the spirit of Cain on you. Because that's what Cain did. So, which means what? Which means if you are given counsel, you don't follow the counsel, you've got the spirit of Cain. That means you are you are you are you are Judas, you are the spirit of Judas that, that just went online. You understand? You are you are a betrayer. You are you are you are activated as a betrayer. 
Because when you don't want to get yourself right, that means you have the spirit of hatred. So what is that spirit of hatred going to do? It's going to consume you. That spirit of hatred is going to consume you until you do what? You bring harm to the congregation. You bring harm to, the, to your people. Because you just don't want to make changes in your life. You see that thing? So guess what? You start to have the spirit of bitterness, the spirit of anger, the spirit of hatred, the spirit of malice and deceit. Okay? Those are things that will happen. All right? Read on. Verse 7. The book of Genesis, chapter 4, verse 7. If thou doest well, shall thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. And unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. You see that thing right there? If thou doest well, shall thou not be accepted? If you do well, if you keep the commandments, will, you not be, will I not accept you, King? You understand? If thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. Because what is sin? The breaking of God's law. So Cain's desire will be to what? To serve the devil. That will be his desire. Watch this. Give me that to book of John, chapter 8. Let me see. Hmm. That popped into my head. One second. Give me John 8, 47. John 8, verse 47. The book of John, chapter 8, verse 47. He that is of God heareth God's words. Mm -hmm. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. Because Cain was told, listen, if thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door, and unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. Cain was not of God. That's why in 1 John 3 it says, Cain, not as Cain, who was of that wicked one. He was not of God. Okay? Jump up to verse, jump up to verse 44. It, book of John, chapter 8, verse 44. Ye are of your father, the devil. You see that? You are of your father, the devil. Because guess what? Cain, his desire would be to do what? To serve the devil. Read that again. Book of John, chapter 8, verse 44. Ye are of your father, the devil. Mm -hmm. And the last of your father, ye will do. Read. He was a murderer from the beginning. He was a what? A murderer from the beginning. Because he hated his brother. That's, the, that's where, the, that's where the, the, the murderer's mindset comes from. Hatred. Because remember, yes, uh, he was a murderer from the beginning. Guess what? Because Cain, he had, he what? He hated his brother. He was angry with his brother without a cause. That's what we read in Matthew 5, 21 and 22. 21, it says, thou shalt not kill. 22, Christ says, but I say unto you, if you have, if you hate your, if you are angry with your brother without a cause, you are a murderer too. And Cain, he was angry with his brother without a cause because his own work was evil and his brother's righteous. Okay, read on. He was a murderer from the beginning mm -hmm. and abode not in the truth. Because there is no truth in him. Read. When he speaketh a lie, so he said. speaketh of his own. When he speaketh a lie, what is the lie that Cain told? The lie that Cain told is that they say, um, they were asked, the Lord asked him, Where's your brother? He says, Am I my brother's keeper? One, the first thing he did was he hated his brother and he killed his brother. Now he wants to cover it up by what? Bearing false witness. Saying, am I my brother's keeper? I don't know where he's at. That's why he has said he was a what? He was a liar when he speaketh a lie. Read that part again. When he speaketh a lie, mm -hmm. he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. He is a father of it because that spirit of change is the same spirit that came to Eve. Also. You understand? The same spirit. He was a father. He's a father of life. He's a teacher of life. He's a teacher of life. 
Understand it? Because that's why America today, America loves life. You understand? That's why they are able to manipulate and control all these countries because they have what? Because they, 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 are, they are in bed with lies. So America is holding them at ransom because of the lies that America is, 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 um, is protecting. Because when you get out of line, they expose you to what? The mouth that the Lord has given unto them. The media. You understand? Let's go back. Go back to... Um, Go back to Genesis 4, verse 7 again. The book of Genesis, chapter 4, verse 7. Mm -hmm. If thou doest well, shall thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door, and unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. Go ahead. And Cain talked with Abel, his brother, and it came to pass, when they were in the field, that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. Because, which means, what was Cain doing? Cain was plotting how he is going to kill his brother. He premeditated mad. He was meditating on these things. You understand? He meditated upon it. Watch this. Give me the book of Proverbs, chapter 4. Give me Proverbs, chapter 4, and verse 14. Proverbs 4, verse 14. The book of Proverbs, chapter 4, verse 14. Enter not into the path of the wicked, and go not in the way of evil men. The way of evil men is going against this Bible. Go ahead. Avoid it. Pass not by it. Turn from it and pass away. Meaning go around. You see the evil, go around it. Don't get yourself mixed up in the evil. Read. For they sleep not, For they what? except they have... For they sleep not. So the wicked in verse 14 is explaining in verse 16 what they do. They sleep not. Why? Go ahead. Except they have done mischief. You see that thing? They don't sleep until they've done mischief. That means they sit down, they plan the mischief. They have to sit down and plot the mischief. They eat. Come on. And their sleep is taken away. Uh-huh. Unless they cause some to fall. That's some evil stuff right there. That was the spirit that Cain was moving in against his brother. Come on. The book of Proverbs, chapter 4, verse 17. Mm -hmm. For they eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. You see that thing? So if you're eating bread, because you need bread on a daily basis. Think about it. You need bread on a daily basis. So it says... For they eat the bread of wickedness. That means daily they have to meditate on mischief. How they gonna how they going to execute the mischief that they have planned in their mind? For they eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. You see that thing? Hmm. Go back to where it was that? Genesis chapter four, verse eight. Now the book of the book of Genesis chapter four, verse eight. And Cain talked with Abel, his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. Come on. And the Lord said unto Cain, where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? You see what he's saying? He's, he's, he's even speaking in a disrespectful tone. You understand? Am I my brother's keeper? Watch this. Come on. And he said, What hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. So what did Cain do? Cain, he decided to dig a hole, a pit, and put his brother underground and cover him. That's what Cain did. After he killed his brother, he, he dug a hole and put his brother underground and covered him. And said, I don't know where he is. He just did that in his speaking so casual. You understand? Read again verse 10. The book of Genesis, chapter 4, verse 10. Mm -hmm. And he said, What hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. You see that thing? The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. From there, give me the book of Jude, verse 11. Jude, verse 11. The book of Jude, verse 11. 
Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain. The way of Cain is hatred, murder. You understand? Because they, are, they were not of the Lord. They are not of the Lord. The spirit of Cain is not the spirit of the Lord. It's the spirit of the devil. Satan. Okay, verse 11 again. The book of Jude, verse 11. Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain. Mm -hmm. and ran greedily after the era of Balaam for reward and perished in the gainsaying of Kor. Kor. Now that's some heavy stuff. What, is, what Jude is, the apostle Jude, listen, it says, and ran greedily after the era of Balaam for reward. Because guess what? Balaam, if you read the book of Numbers, Balaam, he wanted to get paid so he can do what? He can curse Israel because he hated Israel. You understand? So now, greedily after the era of the love for reward. So the spirit of Cain is the spirit of hatred, which is also the spirit of covetousness and greed. You understand? It says, and perish in the gainsaying of Korah, the spirit of hatred. Hatred for what? Order, structure, rank, discipline, command, correction. That's the spirit of Cain. The spirit of Cain is three spirits in one, okay? The spirit of hatred, which is murder, okay? The spirit of covetousness and greed, and the spirit of hating law and order. The spirit of jealousy. Because the spirit of Korah was the spirit of jealousy and envy. That's some heavy stuff right there. I'll give an example of that. Give me Sarah 45 and 6. Ecclesiastes, chapter 45, verse 6. Okay? The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 45, verse 6. Read. He exalted Aaron, and holy men like unto him, even his brother of the tribe of Levi. So now we talk about Aaron. Remember, Aaron was the high priest, because Aaron will represent what? Represent the Levitical priesthood, which is what? It also goes into the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. You understand? Watch this. Jump down to verse... Read verse 16 now, one six. Verse 16. He chose him out of all men living to offer sacrifices to the Lord, incense, and a sweet savor for a memorial to make reconciliation for his people. So now verse 16 is letting you, it says, he chose Aaron out of all men living to offer sacrifices to the Lord. Listen, the office of the priesthood, that was a holy, holy, that was a holy honor to be chosen for the office of the priesthood. You understand? So watch this. Verse 17. He gave unto him his commandments and authority in the statutes of judgments that he should teach Jacob the testimonies and inform Israel in his laws. So now, because the, the tribe of Levi was scattered among all the tribes, their job was to, get, to make sure that Israel is on point. To keep Israel in check. That was what the Levites was doing. To keep, to put, to put Israel in check. You understand? Watch this. Verse 18. Strangers conspired together against him. Stop right there. What did he say? Strangers conspired together against him. Who's the stranger? Who, 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 who? The Lord is, is calling them strangers. He says, strangers conspired together against him. Who's the him? Aaron and Moses also. Okay, he's going to tell you who the, the strangers are. Read. And maligned him in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. Even the men that were of Dathan's and Abiron's side. Uh -huh. And the congregation of Korah with fury and wrath. You see that thing? So Dathan, uh, Korah, and Abiron. Guess what? They were, they were, they were, the Lord called them strangers through the rock. These are strangers. That's why Christ said they must be treated as publicans, strangers and publicans. You understand? Meaning what? They must be put out of the, their names must be put out of Israel. So the hatred they had, they, you see what they were called? Strangers. Meaning treat them like the strangers. Treat them like as a heathen and publican. Treat them as heathens and publicans. You understand? 
strangers conspired together against him and maligned him in the wilderness. They spoke evil of him, even the men that were of Dathan, meaning what? The, the people that were following Dathan, called the Dathan and Abiram, and the congregation of Korah. So you see what Korah did? Korah actually had a congregation within another, within the congregation. Meaning what? He used the fruit of Moses and Aaron to create his own congregation within the congregation. Meaning what? He had cliques. Okay? He needed, he, 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 Korah, Jatan, and Abiram, they set up a day called a coup d'etat. They set up a coup d'etat. That's what they did to overthrow Moses and Aaron. You understand? So that's why if you read the New Testament during the time of Christ, during the time of the apostles, that was what it was going on throughout. From the, from the time in the wilderness, that thing went down. Guess what? Even during the time of the apostles, the same thing was going down. You understand? To overthrow the leadership. Why? Why would they do that? Because they hated law and order. But more importantly, that was hiding. It was the spirit of envy and jealousy. The proof of that is verse 6. Go back to Sirach 45, verse 6 again. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 45, verse 6. He exalted Aaron and holy men like unto him, even his brother of the tribe of Levi. When he says even his brother, talk about Moses. So he exalted Moses and Aaron as the leaders. So guess what? Korah, Jathan, and Abiram, they had the spirit of jealousy. They had the spirit of jealousy to say, but God is also dealing with us. Why is he dealing with you only? He's also dealing with us. What were they saying effectively? We are all equal. No. That's not in the Bible. How can there be inequality with regards to the nations and there's equality among Israel? That will make no sense. You understand? It doesn't make any sense. The proof of that, even during the time of Christ, watch this. Give me the book of Matthew, chapter 13, real quick. Okay? Even during the time of Christ, Matthew chapter 13 and verse 10. Matthew 13, verse 10. Read this. The book of Matthew, chapter 13, verse 10. And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? Read. He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. Because you see the multitude that was following Christ, if had Christ spoken to them plainly, you understand? Guess what they were going to think? The, the, the multitude that, the, when Christ was with the disciples, guess what the multitude was going to think? The multitude was going to disrespect the apostles. Because they were going to think, no, we are on the same level. So Christ did it like that for order. Christ did that. He taught like that because of what? Order. For order. You understand? Even in heaven, listen, there's order. There's the most like God. There's Christ. Okay? And there's the angel. There's order. That's why you have Michael the archangel. He's, he's, he's the chief of the angels. Christ is the cheapest of them all. So you don't you don't hear you don't read in the scriptures where Michael is complaining that why is Christ the head? You don't hear that. You understand? So now Christ he taught like he spoke, he spoke in parables. Why? For order. So that Negroes don't have the spirit of disrespect. Because Negroes are fond of doing that. You understand? That's why the Apostle Paul was getting on the church of Corinth like this. Because the church of Corinth, they thought they were the Apostle Paul's left. He had to check them. He had to give them the, he had to, he had to give them his resume. You understand? Watch this. Give me the book of Mark, chapter 6. Give me Mark, chapter 6, verse 37. We're going to read that. I'm not going to explain this parable now, but there's somewhere I want to get to. The book of Mark, chapter 6, verse 37. He answered and said unto them, Give ye them to eat. And they said unto him, Shall we go and buy two hundred pennyworth of bread and give them to eat? 
the, he said unto them, how many loaves have ye? Go and see. And when they knew, they said five and two fishes. Come on. And he commanded them to make all sit down by companies upon the green grass. So he told them to sit down by companies upon the green grass. Watch this. And they sat down in ranks. In what? In ranks. You see that thing? During the time of Christ, there was rank. What we're having now, guess what? Is the same thing that our forefathers were doing back then. Even during the time of Christ. Read that part again, verse 40. The book of Mark, chapter 6, verse 4. And they sat down in ranks mm -hmm. by hundreds and by fifties. Meaning what? They set them, them up with captains of hundreds, captains of fifties. You understand? Captains of hundreds and captains of fifties by rank. There was order. That's why he spoke to them in parables. When he was with the disciples, he made he spoke, you know, he, he, he used, he did not use uh, parables and dark things. You understand? He, he spoke plain to them. To make sure that when he's gone, they will be able to take the lead and teach the gospel. Okay? Now, uh, give me the book of Ecclesiastes chapter, let me see, Sirach chapter 9. Give me Sirach chapter 9 verse 13. Mm -hmm. That's it right there. The book of Ecclesi Ecclesiasticus, chapter 9, verse 13. Keep thee far from the man that has power to kill. You see that thing? Keep, he says, stay away from a man that has power to kill. Hatred, envy, jealousy. Okay, come on. So shall thou not doubt the fear of death. You see that thing? So that you are not doubting the fear of death. Always looking over your shoulder about that brother about that sister come on and if thou come unto him make no fault meaning when, when you come unto him make no fault because if you make no if you make a fault the he will kill you go ahead lest he take away thy life presently you see that thing right there that's exactly what Cain did to his brother he took his life really remember that thou goest in the midst of snares mm -hmm. And that thou walkest upon the battlements of the city. The battlement of the city meaning what? The city is full of minefields. Wherever you step on, you might step on a minefield. It will blow you to hell and back. Okay? Now, go back to Exodus now, 20 verse 14. Exodus 20 verse 14. The book of Exodus chapter 20 verse 14. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Read that again. Exodus chapter 20, verse 14. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Don't commit adultery. So now, that's a big one. This is what, this actually goes hand in hand with the, with the one we just read. Thou shalt not kill. Okay? Watch this. Give me First John 2, 16. Thou shalt not commit adultery. First John chapter 2, verse 16. First John chapter 2, verse 16. Mm -hmm. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. So now, John is explaining, he says, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes. Now, we're going to deal with those two for now. The lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes. Okay, watch this. We're going to deal with the lust of the eyes first. Give me that in Matthew chapter 5, verse 27. Matthew chapter 5, verse 27. Watch this. The book of Matthew chapter 5, verse 27. Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, thou shalt not commit adultery. So now Christ keeps explaining these things over and over. He's Remember, hmm, let's understand why, why Christ keeps explaining, he, he keeps going deeper on his law, right? Give me the book of Isaiah 42, 21. This is the reason why he's doing it. Isaiah 42, verse 21. Watch this. The book of Isaiah, chapter 42, verse 21. Mm -hmm. The Lord is well pleased for his righteousness' sake. 
he will magnify the law and make it honorable. That's why he's doing this. That's why when we read, we read it, says, it was said by them of all time. Then after that, he says, but I say unto you, he is magnifying the law and making it more honorable. That's why he keeps saying, but I say unto you. And guess what? Christ trumps Moses. Christ trumps Moses. If Christ says it, it's law. That's it. There's no if or maybe, but, but, no, none of that. Okay? Mm. Go back to Matthew 5, verse 27 again. The book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 27. Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, thou shalt not commit adultery. Go ahead. But I say unto you, mm -hmm. that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her, hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. Already in his mind. Now Christ took it a step further. It says, but I say unto you, that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust, to lust after her, have committed adultery with her already in his mind. Because that, because what is this called? The lust of the eye. You look and you want to do something about what you are seeing. You understand? Is, is, it say, is it saying, don't look at a woman? No. It says, don't look and lust. That's where the problem is. Because where is lust begin? Well, lust begins in your head, in your mind. Watch this. Give me Proverbs 24 verse 9. Proverbs chapter 24, verse 9. Write this down. Proverbs 24, verse 9. Watch this. The book of Proverbs chapter 24, verse 9. Their thought of foolishness is sin. You see that thing? Their thought. Their thought. That's why it says, Whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her has committed adultery with her already in his heart, in his mind. Because the thought, what is that the thought of foolishness? Lasting after the sister. You're looking at a sister, you are undressing the sister. The sisters do the same thing too. They look at a brother, they are already undressing the brother. You are committing adultery with that man already in your mind. And by that, read that again, verse 9, Proverbs. The book of Proverbs, chapter 24, verse 9. Mm -hmm. The thought of foolishness is sin. Mm -hmm. And the scorner is an abomination to men. You see that thing? Because that's a scornful thought. That's a foolish and a dumb thought. Go back to uh, Matthew chapter 5 now. 5 verse 28. The book of Matthew chapter 5 verse 28. But I say unto you, that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her, hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. Already in your mind, because that's where lust takes place. It takes place in your mind, the thought of foolishness. Those foolish thoughts of lust, lustful thoughts, mm -hmm. that's how you commit adultery with that woman or with that man. Because why? The lust of the eye. Watch this. Give me Sirach 9 verse 5. Ecclesiasticus chapter 9 verse 5. The book of Ecclesiasticus chapter 9 verse 5. Mm -hmm. Gaze not on a maid that thou fall not by those things that are precious in her. Read that again. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 9, verse 5. Gaze not on a maid that thou fall not by those things that are precious in her. He says, Gaze not. To gaze meaning what? The way you're looking, you are lasting. Don't last on a maid. A maid is a young woman. Okay? that thou fall not by those things that are precious in her. What are those things that are precious in her? It's talking about the things she's working with. You understand? You can use your imagination. I don't have to spell those out. The things that are precious in her. That's why today the women dress the way they do today. Because of what? Because of quote unquote, those things that are precious in them. You understand? Next verse. Verse six. Give not thy soul unto harlots, that thou lose not thine inheritance. He says, don't give your soul, your mind, your spirit unto harlot, meaning Paul, that thou lose not thine inheritance. You don't lose your spot in the kingdom. That's what he's saying. Jump down to verse 8. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 9, verse 8. Turn away thine eye from a beautiful woman mm -hmm. and look not upon another's beauty. Really? For many have been deceived by the beauty of a woman, 
for here with love is kindled as a fire. You see that thing? That love is talking about lust. Lust is kindled as a fire. It says, for many, because many have been deceived by the beauty of a woman. Watch this. Give me 12 verse 31 real quick. Many have been deceived by the beauty of a woman. Let's understand what that means. 12 verse 31 verse 30. The book of Proverbs, chapter 31, verse 30. Mm -hmm. Favor is deceitful and beauty is vain. You see that favor is deceitful and favor is deceitful when what? When somebody has already planned evil using favor, meaning what? The deceit is covered with the favor that you have been given. It's not just saying that when somebody is, is giving you favor, it means that's the spirit of deceit. No. It's talking about if they have ulterior motives. That's the point. Okay? Verse 30 again. The book of Proverbs, chapter 31, verse 30. Favor is deceitful and beauty is vain. What did he say? But a woman, favor is deceitful and beauty is vain. And beauty is vain. Because if you're just focusing on the beauty, guess what? You're focusing on the pretty face, you will be you are deceived by that pretty face, not realizing that behind that pretty face there's a dragon sitting in there. Go ahead. But a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. But the woman that, that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Okay. We praise the one that fear the Lord. Because even if you are ugly looking, quote unquote, because you might think, oh no, but why am I saying ugly? But at least it, it is in the Bible. Hold on. One second. Let me just, uh, you know. Let me, um, let me use a precept. Okay. Um, give me the book of Genesis. Okay. Give me Genesis chapter 29. Genesis chapter 29 verse 16. Watch this. The book of Genesis chapter 29 verse 16. Come on. And Laban had two daughters. The name of the elder was Leah, and the name of the younger was Rachel. Come on. Leah was tender-eyed, but Rachel was beautiful and well-favored. Okay, that's it right there. Okay. It says Leah was tender-eyed, but Rachel was beautiful and well-favored. So they're giving you the opposite of these two sisters. You understand? Meaning what? Just to keep it simple, you know, you understand? Um, Leah was cute, but Rachel was gorgeous. Let's put it like that. All right. Go back to where you were at. Sarah chapter 9, verse 8. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 9, verse 8. Mm -hmm. Turn away thine eye from a beautiful woman and look not upon another's beauty. For many have been deceived by the beauty of a woman, for here with love is kindled as a fire. You see that thing right there? Watch this. Go back to where it was at. No, no, give me Sarah 25, 21. We're still dealing with the lust of the eye. Remember, it says, Thou shalt not commit adultery. Your eyes can commit adultery because guess what? Your eyes don't think, but your brain, your mind is full of lust because when you your eyes looking at, your brain is processing it. Guess what? You are undressing the brother or the sister. There are 25, 21. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 25, verse 21. Mm -hmm. Stumble not at the beauty of a woman and desire her not for pleasure. You see that thing? It says, do not stumble at the beauty of a woman. Don't fall because of a woman's beauty and desire her not for pleasure. Don't desire the sister because you just want to bump and grind. Brothers also, uh, sisters also, don't desire a brother because you are bent. You understand? Stumble not at the beauty of a woman and desire her not for pleasure. Okay? Give me James chapter 1 verse 13. James chapter 1 verse 13. The apostle James. James chapter 1 verse 13. The book of James, chapter 1, verse 13. Mm -hmm. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted he any man. 
So when you are tempted by your own lust, don't say the Lord is doing it. Mm -mm. Your own sin, your own filthiness that you have not washed is the reason why you are tempted. Go ahead. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. You see that thing? The reason why we get tempted is because of our own lust and we are enticed by what we're looking at. You understand? Because at the lust that is within is the reason why we are tempted. It's not because the Lord is doing it. It's because your lust that is within you is the reason why you are tempted and enticed by what you're looking at because of what the lust of your eyes. Go ahead. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, Bring it forth death. You see that thing? When lust has conceived, where does it conceive? Where is it conceived? In your mind. You entertain it. You don't get rid of that thought. You entertain the thought. It bringeth forth sin because you're going to act upon what? The lust that is within. And guess what? And sin, when it is finished, it bringeth forth death. For the wages of sin is death. Read. Do not err. My beloved brethren. You see what he's saying right there? Do not err, meaning do not sin, my beloved brethren. Give me that in First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9. First book of Corinthians, chapter 6, verse 9. Mm -hmm. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind. You see that thing? is that The people that is listening here says, nine of these people are going to see the kingdom. They're going to enter into the kingdom if they don't repent. Be not deceived, neither fornicators. You understand? Sexual sin, they're those that participate in sexual sin, physical or spiritual. No idolaters. You understand? Physical and spiritual. No adulterers. Physical and spiritual. No effeminate, okay? No abusers of themselves with mankind. That goes into what? Homosexual. You understand? Homosexual. Homo same sex relations. Not same sex marriage, because that's not a marriage, okay? There's no such thing as same sex marriage. That is a what? It's just a relation. Same sex filthy relations, okay? Abusers of themselves with mankind. Because what we are going over when it says, thou shalt not commit adultery. All of these things that the Apostle Paul is listing in verse 9, they fall under adultery. You understand? Watch this. Now, let me see if I have that video. Now, what I'm about to show you is, is, is this, this guy, okay? He, I think he even appeared on, in, a, in a cartoon. They played his, 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 his story on the boondocks, okay? Abusers of themselves with mankind. Watch this. Before we get there, give me the book of Isaiah real quick. Isaiah 42, 22. Isaiah 42, verse 22. Yeah, the book of Isaiah, chapter 42, verse 22. But this is a people robbed and spoiled. Mm -hmm. Talking about the Israelites, this is a people robbed and spoiled. We are robbed of our resources. We are robbed of our identity and our culture. We are spoiled of the philosophies of men. Come on. They are all of them snared in holes. The holes that the traps that society set for us. The traps they set for us. Come on. And they are hid in prison houses. They are what? They are hid in prison houses. They are hid in prison houses. We talk about the actual jails. You understand? And... The, the lens of our captivity. The lens of our captivity, those are prison houses. You understand? Read. They are for a prey, mm -hmm. and none delivereth for a spoil, and none saith restore. No nation says we must be restored back to everything that was taken from us must be restored back to us. No nation is saying that. You understand? All of them, they are okay with us being in our, it being robbed and spoiled. They are okay with that. And they are okay with us when we are being snared in the whole of society. Politics, religion, you understand? Um, democracy and all of that, drugs, abortions, okay? All of that. 
that that's what is going into this the whole just like poor education poor housing you understand poor food and all of that is going into that and they are hidden prison houses the physical the actual prisons and the countries that we have been scattered as slaves the countries that we've been colonized so on and so forth but i want to focus on their hidden prison houses because in those prison houses guess what happens you have a male prison you have a female prison the same spirit that goes on the the abusers of themselves with mankind happens both in the male prison and in the female prison. Watch this. Now, let me share this video, okay? This guy's name is called Fleece Johnson. Just pay attention, pay close attention here, okay? I'm not gonna play the whole thing. You can, you know, do, you can read, you can watch the whole thing on your own. Locker visited Kentucky State. But when Locker visited Kentucky State Penitentiary, we met Fleece Johnson. A long-time inmate who practices a very different kind of homosexuality. But we have sexual desires, right? So you got a bunch of men locked up at one place. All of them get horny. All of them's horny. All of them got sexual desires. So what are they going to do? If you won't let them have a woman, they going to have each other. Somebody's going to have to give up some booty. And it's just as simple. <laughs> the most uh, memorable story that Fleece told us was about the place and importance that booty has in a maximum security penitentiary. And he went on about it and on about it. In his prison, booty. Booty was uh, more important than food. Booty, a man's butt. It was more, I'm sorry, it was more booty, having some booty, was more important than drinking water, man. I like booty. Johnson went on to... Oof, could you give me that in that Job 15 verse 15, we read earlier, watch it. Job chapter 15 verse 15. Job chapter 16. 1 5, 15 verse 16. Come on. The book of Job chapter 15 verse 16. How much more abominable and filthy is man which drinketh iniquity like water? You see that thing? He says booty was more important than drinking water. You understand? Mm -hmm. Go back to 1 Corinthians 6 verse 9. Okay. I'm going to just uh, you know, close it from here on. Yeah. Okay. First Corinthians 6 verse 9. First book of Corinthians chapter 6 verse 9. Mm -hmm. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind. That's what we're reading here. Abusers of themselves with mankind. You understand? That falls under adultery. Okay? Watch this. Give me 1 Corinthians 7 verse 1. First book of Corinthians chapter 7 verse 1. Now concerning the things whereof he wrote unto me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. It is good for a man not to touch a woman. It's going into what? Adultery. You understand? Dealing with a woman that's not your wife. That's what it's saying. Come on. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife and let every woman have her own husband. Because now Christ, he taught one wife, one woman, one wife, one husband. That's what Christ taught, one wife. You understand? So it says to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife and let every woman have her own husband. So does that mean that just because you are horny, you are you are you are burning, you understand? You should get a wife or you should get a husband. No, you must still follow the process. You must prove a brother, you must prove a sister, prove a friend, like it says in Sarah 6. You understand? Sarah 37 and 12. You must do that. Sarah 27. You must be the able book to of prove. Hold on. Oh. You must be able to prove that. Okay. So 
He's not saying you must now jump to the step of proving the brother or proving the sister. No, you must still prove them. You understand? Jump down to verse 9. First Corinthians chapter 7, verse 9. But if they cannot contain, let them marry. For it is better to marry than to burn. You see that thing? It says, if they cannot contain, meaning what? If you cannot contain your sexual abuse, it says, let them marry. Because it is better to marry than to burn. Yes, but he's not saying you must keep the step of proving a brother or a sister. You must still prove that person before you marry them. You understand? That's what he's going into. Understand that. Let's go back. Go back to Exodus 20. Verse 14 again. The book of Exodus chapter 20, verse 14. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Watch this. Jump down to verse 17. Verse 17. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's wife. Stop right there. So for you to commit adultery, guess what happened? It, you have, it, it, it's based on what? Covetousness. Because covetousness actually is what? Is the root of all these commandments that we're reading. Covetousness is the first on the list, by the way. Covetousness, which is idolatry. The root cause, like when we, when we started with the text, the root cause of idolatry, worshipping idols, what is the root cause? Covetousness. Where does it begin? In your mind, in your spirit, the lust of your eye. You understand? And once you fulfill the lust of your eye, you're going to fulfill the lust of your flesh. Okay? That goes back to 1 John 2, 16 that we read earlier. Read that again, verse 17. The book of Exodus, chapter 20, verse 17. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, mm -hmm. nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. So now, we, look, we want to deal with that part when it says, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife. Because when you covet your neighbor's wife, guess what happens? You end up committing adultery. Understand that? Watch this. Give me the book of Job. See. Give me Job. Um, Job chapter 31, verse 1. Job 31, verse 1. The book of Job chapter 31, verse 1. I made a covenant with mine eyes. Why then should I think upon a maid? You see what he's saying? He says, I've made a covenant with mine eyes. Why? Because remember, it says, the lust of the eye. So if you have lust of your if you have the lust of your if you have the lust of the eyes, you must make a covenant, you must make an agreement with your eyes so that your eyes do not look and lust. That's what it says. Because you've made an agreement with your eyes, your spiritual eyes, guess what? Why then should I think upon a maid, a young woman that will belong to you? Jump down to verse 9. Watch this. Verse 9. If mine heart have been deceived by a woman, mm -hmm. Or if I have laid wait at my neighbor's door. You see that thing? You have laid wait at your neighbor's door. Because why are you laying wait at your neighbor's door? To sleep with his wife. That's why it says, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife. Okay? You lay wait at your neighbor's door because you want to sleep with his wife. Covetousness, which is idolatry. Covetousness will lead to adultery. Okay, come on. Then let my wife grind unto another and let others bow down upon her. You see what he's saying? So he's saying, if I'm doing, if I, if, if I do verse 9, then let verse 10 happen to my wife. Let, then let my wife grind unto another. Meaning what? Let others sleep with your wife. Because you are doing what? So now guess what? Christ is taking, Christ took it a step further in, in Matthew chapter 5, 27 and 28. If you are thinking about it, guess what? The sort of foolishness is sin. So not only, if you're, even if you're not doing it physically, but spiritually, mentally, you are thinking about it, you are doing that. You see that thing? Heavy stuff right there. Verse 10 again. The book of Job, chapter 31, verse 10. Then let my wife grind unto another, 
and let others bow down upon her. Come on. For this is an heinous crime. Yea, it is an iniquity to be punished by the judges. You see that thing? Because the judges will be the one that will come and judge the matter. Because of what? You covet your neighbor's wife. You understand? You are coveting your neighbor's wife. There's another one. Let me see. Give me the book of Jeremiah 5 verse 7. Jeremiah chapter 5 verse 7. The book of Jeremiah chapter 5 verse 7. How shall I pardon thee for this? Thy children have forsaken me and sworn by them that are no gods. When I had fed them to the full, they then committed adultery. You see that thing? They committed spiritual fornication because you see it says, and, and sown by them that are no gods, meaning what? Worshipping of idols. So worshipping of idols, that spiritual fornication is adultery also. When I fed them to the full, they then committed adultery. Come on. And assembled themselves by troops in the hallowed houses. You see that thing? They assembled themselves by troops in the hallowed houses. Meaning what? They be, they be, as, you know, when troops go to war, when we go to war, men in order, you understand? So in battle array, that's what they are doing. There'll be multiple men going to the same house, going to commit adultery. You understand? That's what he's explaining you. Come on, verse 8. They were as fed horses in the morning. Everyone neighed after his neighbor's wife. You see that thing? Everyone lusted after his neighbor's wife. That's what it's going into. Everyone made after his neighbor's wife. Read that again. The book of Jeremiah chapter 5 verse 8. They were as fed horses in the morning. Mm -hmm. Everyone made after his neighbor's wife. You see that thing right there? Everyone named after his neighbor's wife. Let's go back to Exodus 20. The book of verse Exodus 17. chapter 20 verse 17. Thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. So that goes into anything that belongs to your neighbor, whether it be a house, whether it be a car, whatever your neighbor has, he says, don't cover it after it. You understand? Do not cover it after anything that is your neighbor. You understand? That goes into what also? That goes into you've got children, you've got daughters, you understand? You're coveting after another man's daughter. Guess what? That's their property. You cannot be doing that. So that covetousness. All right? That's what this is going into. Watch this. Exodus 20 and verse 15. Read that. The book of Exodus, chapter 20, verse 15. Mm -hmm. Thou shall not steal. So now Exodus 20, verse 17 is, is, is what? It, it, it goes into all the laws that you see. Here. Exodus 20, verse 17. Because that's where it all begins. It begins in your mind. You understand? In your spirit. In your soul. Thou shall not steal. Give me the book of Acts. Okay? Give me Acts, chapter 5, verse 1. The book of Acts, chapter 5, verse 1. But a certain man named Ananias, with Sapphira, his wife, mm -hmm. sold a possession. They did and what? And kept back, sold a possession. So this is husband and wife. They sold a possession. Okay, watch this. They had a possession that they sold. Watch this. It, this, this, this possession that they sold was there. Read. And kept back part of the price his wife also being privy to it mm -hmm. and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles feet so what they did was these two they sold the possession right they kept they kept back part of the price of the possession which they sold and the wife was also what privy to it she was aware of the, what they done she was aware of this money that they kept back Okay, and took the rest is like, let's say, the thing that you are selling is a hundred rand. Okay, and you take 
40 bucks from that 100 rand. You say, okay, we're going to keep 40 bucks. We're going to give them 50 bucks. So you take the 50 bucks, you go and lay it before the apostles' feet. That's what this is. That's what was going on here. Come on. But Peter said, Ananias, why had Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. and to keep back part of the price of the land? You see that thing? So the possession is the land. So Peter is asking Ananias, he said, listen, Ananias, why has, why has Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost? So Satan jumped on Ananias. Okay, come on. While it remained, was it not thine own? So he's asking him, was this property not your own? This is your land that you are selling. You are selling so you can help. But now it says, why did it remain? Was it not your own? Come on. And after it was sold, was it not in thine own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart? Thou hast not lied unto man, but unto God. You see that thing? So Ananias and his wife, they like the Holy Ghost. They like the Lord. So the Apostle Peter was on that level where he was able to tell. But he was telling him, listen, why have you lied to the Holy Ghost? Because this was your land. Why didn't you just say, listen, I'm, I'm selling the land, okay? And out of this land, I'm selling it for 100. But out of this 100, I need 40 bucks because I need to take care of some business. I'm going to give 50 bucks. Nothing was going to be, not, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with doing it. Okay, come on. And Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and gave up the ghost. Really? And great fear came on all them that heard these things. Because what Ananias and Sapphira did, they, they stole and they lied about what they stole. And they lied about the fact that they had stolen. Really? And the young man arose, wound him up, and carried him out, and buried him. Meaning Ananias died. Okay, come on. And it was about the space of three hours after, when his wife, not knowing what was done, came in. So uh, three hours later, his wife comes in. Watch this. She didn't. She doesn't and know. Peter, that, the wife doesn't know that the, the husband is dead. Come on. And Peter answered unto her. Tell me whether you sold the land for so much. And she said, yea, for so much. She lied also. You understand? She, they sold and they are bearing forth witness. Really? Then Peter said unto her, How is it that ye have agreed together to tempt the spirit of the Lord? Behold, the feet of them which have buried thy husband are at the door and shall carry thee out. Because you're going to die also. Really? Then fell she down straight away at his feet and yielded up the ghost. And the young man came in and found her dead and carrying her forth, buried her by her husband. Three. And great fear came upon all the church and upon as many as heard these things. You see that thing? So because they, they could have just told the truth. You understand? They could have avoided this whole thing. Go back to Exodus 20. The book of Exodus, chapter 20, verse 15. Verse 15. Thou shalt not steal. Really? Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. You see that thing? That's what Safira and Ananias did. And Ananias and Safira, they bear false witness. They stole and they, they, were, they were bearing false witness about what, were, what had gone down. That's what went down. Okay? I'm going to end the class right here. Okay? I'm going to add the class right here. Let's break break in the honor of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take it. This is my body, which is broken for you. These do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup. When he had sucked, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye, as oft as ye drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, 
ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Let's give the most high hand for that. Oh, praise to the most high. Oh, praise. Oh, praise to the most high. Oh, praise.